um, and I was hoping to get it all done tonight. Um, but we'll get as much as we can. If it goes over an hour, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it up if, it, if it's within like an hour and a half. Um, but these, these questions are questions that I got. Uh, if you guys can mute yourself, uh, and, then, and then if you need a question, you just unmute yourself what, to ask a question. Um, one more vote. If you can, if you can just mute it. All right, see how Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I muted you guys. If you need something, on the bottom of the screen should be a, a picture of a microphone. Just unmute yourself. It can also be set up, I think, with the space bar. You hit it and it unmutes, and you hit it, it mutes back. Um, so anyways, there's about uh, 12 to 15 questions here related to a couple different manufacturers and uh, defrost circuits and defrost systems. Um, a couple of them are a little bit redundant, so I tried to group them together into the uh, presentation here. Um, starting off with the first question, uh, how many days can a refrigerator go without defrosting before the customer starts to lose food? Now unfortunately there isn't a direct answer it's like oh the answer is always five um, if you look at this picture of an evaporator that's not defrosting um, once ice builds up here at the bottom of this evaporator here and I'll just uh, highlight it once ice appears down here the fan is trying to draw air up and blow into the refrigerator and pull air up through the coils well, immediately when it gets this blocked with ice, you're not going to get air through your coils and you're going to definitely have uh, cooling issues. Uh, these cooling issues would start, believe it or not, mainly in the refrigerator section on these units that use airflow from the freezer to the fridge. Now, this isn't a dually VAP system or anything like that. This is just a basic top mount refrigerator in this picture, but they need to defrost on average from five to eight days and what's going to make a difference how long it's going to take is that if they have a big family and people are constantly opening and closing the door they're going to add excessive moisture which is going to cause this frost to build up even more um, if they go in it once or twice a day just grab what they need and not stand there with the door open they can last longer and the reason why I ask this question is in my lectures I talk about you know defrost and how often do we defrost and we're going to talk about that in a couple of the other slides here um, defrost sometimes happens up to three times a day and um, if the units getting a lot of usage during the day it needs to get that ice off to be the most efficient it could be so um, one of the things that uh, we need to do is we need to defrost it to get that airflow back over the coil so the answer on this one, I think I had it at eight, but I'm going to lean a little bit more towards five. After five days, um, the customer is going to start spoiling some food. Um, but the reason why we talked about this is if you need to order a timer or defrost thermostat or a heater or something like that, if you defrost all the ice on this coil and clean it up before you leave, the customer has about a week and that gives you a little bit of lead time to order the part and to come back and install that part so they have cooling till you come back also if you don't clean off the ice before you leave it's going to be twice as bad than it was when you got there the first time and you're going to wish that you defrosted the ice when you had the opportunity to do that um, continuous run uh, time defrost well, defrost how many times a day? How many times do you guys think that a refrigerator on average defrosts? I think I said the answer. Anybody got, got an answer? One time That's a day? About three. about three times a day. This is just two timers, and the numbers vary. Um, if you look at this timer here, right down here, you can see this is an eight-hour timer. That means every eight hours this refrigerator is going to go into defrost and the 30 minutes that's posted afterwards is how long it's going to be in that defrost cycle. 
So let's just say at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, this refrigerator went into defrost. It's going to defrost for, 20, uh, for 30 minutes, and then after 30 minutes, it's going to go back into cooling. One of the things, if you take note, is look at this line here and the notch on that timer. That is indicating the defrost cycle on that timer. So when you rotate it around and turn that dial around, if you line that, that dash up with this line here, it should click and enter into the defrost cycle. So the answer is three, but if you look at this one here, this is a six hour timer. So if it defrosted every six hours, we defrost four times in one day. Um, manufacturers, uh, depending on the usage of the unit and everything else, um, change varies. There, there's 12 hour timers, 8 hour timers, 6 hour timers. Uh, we'll talk about them when we get into the circuits and can you, can you put a 6 hour in? If you had a unit that was 8 hour, could you put a 6 hour timer in the place of an 8 hour timer? Um, yes, you can. Uh, let's let's talk about um, the next question. On average, uh, uh, excuse my English there. How many hours does the defrost cycle like? How many hours does it take for the defrost cycle start to happen? And that's going to be here. Eight hours. Eight hours or six hours are are these two here, but. The most common timer that's out there is an eight hour defrost, I mean, eight hour cool, and they used to be 22 minutes in the defrost cycle. This one here is 30. This one here, they didn't give you the time it was actually in the defrost cycle, so I don't have the answer to that one. But the answer to that question, on average, how many times or, or how many hours does it take for the defrost cycle to start? And that is eight hours because eight hour timer was the most common timer used back in the days. Um, the different hour timers changed, varied on manufacturer and product. Now if we look, the test the timer contact for your defrost, what pin numbers would you check? Well, if we look here, this is our defrost heater and our defrost circuit. If we follow the power coming in, it goes down into your timer here on pin one and goes out pin two and feeds the defrost circuit. So the answer to this question, if you wanted to check the defrost timer for defrost, which pins would you check? And that would be pin one and two. If we go back to here, you'd be putting your meter lead on pin one and pin two here. and you would have to make sure that this dial is in the defrost cycle when you are making that test. If you are not in the defrost cycle, you're going to test those two terminals, you're not going to get a reading, and you're going to assume that contact and the timer is open. So one to two is the answer for this one, for the defrost and defrost by metal circuit. Okay. The defrost timer is, now remember I told you um, the most common one was an 8 hour 22 minute timer. So for that test question that was posted, that should be the answer. But again, if you look at this one here, this is an 8 hour 20 minute defrost. This is an 8 hour 30 minute defrost. So you're going to find a, a bunch of varieties of different defrost timers and they're cycling. I would recommend getting an 8 hour uh, 20 30 minute timer and keep it on your truck because it is interchangeable with the other timers and I'll explain to you um, what what will happen if you put an 8 hour timer on a, a refrigerator that had a 6 hour or vice versa. We'll get into that. So the answer to this one is the, the defrost timer is usually an 8 hour 20 minute defrost. Again, guys, if you have any questions, you know, just unmute yourself and, and ask. Okay. Uh, the first question was, and this was two questions I posted on the same page. How many main components are the defrost cycle? Or what are, what are the main components that make up a defrost cycle? And here I have the picture. 
Uh, we have a defrost timer, defrost bimetal, and defrost heater. So if power is to come in, it'd come in on pin one here, and I'm just going to show you like the circuit. So power line one would come in to pin one here like this. That would be this wire coming down, going into pin one. It would come out pin two, and that pin two goes to the defrost bimetal. So we'd come out pin two. If we look, it goes to the pink wire on the bimetal, which is this one right here. And then we come out brown to the heater, so this one's going to come to the heater here, and this one's going to go out to neutral. So those three components make up your defrost circuit. If you have a defrosting problem in your refrigerator, one of the things you want to do is you want to advance your timer, put it in this defrost cycle right here, and you could either do it from the timer or from the freezer compartment. Just put an amp probe on there and see if you got heat or current draw on that wire telling you that it's heating. Now, if you have current draw, that means the heater is working and the defrost thermostat is working. But you came there for a defrost problem. We looked at this evaporator here. Let's just look at this one in this picture for a second. We found that this is all frozen up. You put it in defrost and the heater comes on. So now the ice starts to melt. So what's the problem? If you put the defrost timer into defrost and the heater came on and started melting the ice, what do you replace or do you replace anything? Any uh, ideas? Maybe the timer. Maybe the timer, that's correct, because maybe it's not advancing into the defrost cycle. Maybe it's stuck in cooling and not, not telling the defrost heater to come on by itself. So what I usually do is I'll put it in defrost and like this one says 30 minute, I know if I put it in defrost I'm not going to be able to stop it right at the beginning. It's going to go into the defrost cycle just a little bit. So if I put it on defrost I can wait to see if the defrost timer times itself out. In other words it goes into defrost, the fans and the compressor, if you look at one to four is open, all your cooling components are going to stop while we're in defrost. I'm going to wait to see if it kicks those components back on, just to see if the timer is advancing. Because you could ohm out the motor, you could check voltage to the timer motor inside this timer and, and do everything, but the timer has gears inside and those gears could get stripped or worn and even though the motor is electrically running, you could have a problem with the mechanical part of the gears not advancing and going through the cycle. So what parts make up a defrost cycle? So basically is a defrost thermostat or bimetal, defrost heater, and defrost timer. Those are the three components uh, in answer to that question. Hey Richard, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so with that test you just said with uh, placing the amp, testing for amps and letting it see if it'll go through its cycle, are you going to wait that whole 22 minutes or 30 minutes for it to go through that whole cycle to see if the the uh, time of motor is working or the time is? I, I usually do. Usually what I do is I'll go into defrost and I'll see, okay, I got amperage on the heater. I know the heater's working. Okay, let's say I got five amps, four amps, whatever the, the amp draw of the heater is. I'm still going to change the timer because I know the heater is working, but I just want to know if it's advancing. So what do I do? I turn the heater on and let it start melting the ice back there and start getting the ice off. I got to go out to my truck and get a defrost timer if I didn't already look at the problem and say, you know, maybe I should bring a defrost bimetal timer in with me because this job might need it. But if, let's say I go out to my truck, I get the timer out, come back in, it's four or five minutes past. Um, I, I'm going to change the timer anyways. You can wait um, to see if it advances, but if your heater's on, you don't really need to. I usually like to do it just so I know, yeah, I saw it advance. But it's not it's not a need to need to do for troubleshooting, okay? Thank you. All right. So you notice the refrigerator does not seem to defrost. A test is made between brown and white, 
which shows zero volts. So let's see. We're going here on this brown wire here and we're going to white and we got zero volts at this point. Okay? Let's see what the rest says. A second test had a reading of 120 volts between pink and white. So I have 120 here, but here and here I have zero volts. Now, first of all, let's talk about this test terminal. I, I know I, I might not have put it in order, but I wanted to talk about on Whirlpool, especially the, the basic models, top mounts, some of the side-by-sides, when you open it up and you see a mechanical thermostat and a, and a timer like the ones we're talking about, you'll see a plug inside by the controls that have a brown and a pink wire on there. And it's not connected to anything. I remember the first time I saw it, I says, well, what is this plug to? Is there a part here missing or whatever? And if you look, they call it a test terminal. So that test terminal is a way to test components in here. Um, and this one test that I'm doing right here um, is a test that, that is a good test. And it already told me there's a problem. Does anybody know uh, what is wrong in this circuit and why this customer's refrigerator is not defrosting? Bad metal. The bimetal, very good, because if we look at it, I'm going to erase some of this here. If we look at it, we said from pink to white, which are these two points here, I had voltage. So if I go here, voltage is coming in, it goes here through my timer, and I'm just going to put the timer in the defrost circuit. And I'm going to have line one up to this point, but over here, brown is the other side of the bimetal, when I check here, to neutral and here I have zero volts but I got voltage here so it's not coming through the bimetal if the bimetal was good I'd have 120 volts here so the problem with this refrigerator is that the defrost bimetal is open and not allowing voltage to pass through to the defrost heater so the answer is defrost bimetal Now, on defrost systems where the timer clock motor is energized through the thermostat. Now, if you look at this, this timer is in the cooling cycle. Now, if we follow it here, power goes in black, comes out orange to the thermostat. Now, these colors, black, orange, pink, brown, red, they're common on 90% of Whirlpool refrigerators. So if we come back to the thermostat, the defrost timer has to get power through that thermostat in order to cycle. Now here's an important thing. Defrost bimetal could be open. This timer will not advance. We're in cooling right now, so the fans are running, the compressor's running. Uh, this timer motor should be running with those three parts, the, or these two parts here. Um, but if the bimetal heater are open, the timer won't advance and won't go into defrost. So here's an example where you would manually put in defrost and you'd check to see if you got power at that brown and white and that pink and white. And one thing to let you know that you saw I had the white here on the cord. This is on the back of the refrigerator, but this test terminal that's inside the refrigerator so if you look at a refrigerator like this my drawing's horrible I apologize but you look at the refrigerator and here's the separation between the refrigerator and the freezer the controls are down here and that pink and, and brown plug is right here there's a little plug right here pink and brown but this neutral that I showed you is all the way in the back here by the power cord. And, and that's no good um, because, you know, you can't be checking voltage and have one meter lead in the front of the fridge and one reaching all the way around to the back. So if you notice, we got a refrigerator light. And a lot of those top units, the light is right here 
on that same housing where the electrical controls are. So we could use the neutral off the light bulb and check brown to white here and pink to white here. And you could do these same two voltage tests that I just recently showed you inside the refrigerator section by using the neutral on the light bulb instead of going behind the refrigerator and plugging it. We could use a neutral anywhere we can get it. And that one is gonna be the closest to those test terminals that are found inside the refrigerator. Um, so in the question, our defrost system or, or time clocks energized through this thermostat, it says the timer runs when the thermostat's closed, it runs when the thermostat opens, the timer runs continuously except in the defrost cycle. What do you guys think the answer is? The timer runs through the thermostat when it's closed. If this thermostat is open, this timer motor won't get power. Now that's important because I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, continuous run and cumulative one refrigerator timers and explain how this thermostat and the way it's wired makes a difference how the refrigerator works and it's right here okay when we're putting the defrost timer in the defrost cycle the contacts that are closed are what well if we just look at our heater here the contact is one to two here if we look at this one here, also it is one to two. And that's going to the, the defrost heater. So if you notice, the picture on the left is a Whirlpool refrigerator, and the diagram on the right is a Maytag refrigerator. But if you look at the terminals, number one and three is a timer motor. One and three is a timer motor here. One and two is defrost, and one and four is cooling. So those are very common. That's why I said you could take one timer and swap it out, put it into another on most refrigerators. Not 100%. You have to be able to read the diagram. Uh, when putting defrost timer on a cooling cycle, the contacts that are closed are, and the answer is 1 to 4 in the timer, or 1 to 4. Those are the contacts that are closed. So this one is one to four, and then the contacts in defrost are one to two. Tell me if I'm going a little too fast, guys. I had a little bit too much Cuban coffee before class. <laughs> that stuff really wires me out. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about this unit here. To test the defrost timer motor, Sometimes you don't get a reading because of what? What do you guys think the answer is to that one? It could be the resistance level is too high, the motor does not get power all the time, a capacitor is in series with the motor, or the timer does not use a motor. Timer doesn't use a motor. Uh, it does use a motor. And if you look here in our drawing, there's a motor here, and if you look at the drawing on our timer, there's a motor here, internal, and that's pins one and three, and if we look here, pins one and three, that's it. But one thing, I, I, the reason why I showed you the diagram and the timer, I could not find an actual timer with that image on it, is look what's in series with this motor. There's a resistor on this one in series, but look at this one. What do they have in series on this one? Capacitor. A capacitor. So if you're trying to ohm out some of these timers, the first one on the left is going to have a very high resistance because the motors themselves are already like 2,000 ohms. So you're going to have to be on a real high ohm scale in that one. But the one on the right might give you just a little jump of the needle and not give you the resistance value of your timer motor. So I don't want you to think your timer is bad. If you think that the motor is not advancing, put it in defrost and see if it times itself out. That'll let you know if the motor is working. Don't even bother to ohm it out. The one on the right here, 
you'd have to actually put your meter on a capacitance tester, so one that can test farad values. And you check between terminal 1 and 3 to see if you get a reading. And if the motor's good, you'll get a farad value re reading. What it is, I don't know what the value of that is, but the answer to this is that some of them have a capacitor inside, and you have to be aware that if you don't get a reading, it may not be a bad motor. It just may be it has a capacitor in series with it. Okay, below describe at least four ways to use the test terminal on a refrigerator. Okay, test number one. We would test the brown and the pink terminal for ohms to see if our bimetal is closed. We just check continuity. All from the test terminal. This is right here by the refrigerator. So what are the things that we can test? I can check with ohms my defrost heater. If I go brown on that plug and use the neutral on the light bulb like I told you, then I could check the defrost heater for continuity and see if the defrost heater is good right from that test plug. The other test I could make is I could check voltage between brown and white and see if I got 120 volts. If I have 120 volts there and my heater does not work, I would know that my bimetal is good and my timer contact is good, I probably have a bad heater if the heater is not working. The other test I could do is I could put a meter lead on pink and white and check for voltage to see if power is coming out of the timer but maybe not making it to my brown and white. So the four tests you can make is you can ohm out the bimetal, you can check voltage to see if it's coming out of the timer and going to the heater, you can check resistance value of the heater, and uh, those are the tests you can make. All from right there, you don't have to open up the freezer compartment just to diagnose whether the heater is good or bad. Any questions from there? Well, would you go for the defrost heater? You would go from the brown, the test terminal, to white? Yeah, I go to brown, the test terminal, and I'll use the light bulb in the refrigerator compartment, the white wire that's there. On some defrost timers, they'll have a white on them, depending on how it's wired. Not, not this one. This one's wired differently, and this is the one, if you put a regular timer on this machine, it will not defrost. It'll, it, it'll advance in defrost, but it will not go into defrost on its own the way it's wired. And I'll explain why it's wired that way. Um, but they sell a timer, and I'll show you guys the timer. It's, it's a universal defrost timer. And um, it can be used on this machine or any other machine because it has an extra little wire hanging off of it. Give me a second. Let me find that for you real quick here. Um, one second, guys. Gonna find that timer here. Okay. Right here, if you guys can see it. Um, you guys can't see it, can you? Let me see here. I'm going to stop presenting and then okay so if you look at this timer here they have this extra wire coming off of it and you see that little like slot that's inside of it it slides over one of those pins and those pins have numbers so you have to look at the diagram and see which number the defrost timer motor is on and that would be like if we looked at this one here the defrost timer motor is on the red and the pink but you don't have the number so if we looked here the timer motor on this one is on one and three so that loose wire would be connected right here onto pin one it would slide right over that 
and then you would plug in the regular refrigerator harness over top of it. So that's how you would use that universal timer that's um, in this picture here. So you could carry that one timer. The thing is, is every time you use it, you're going to have to connect this wire. And the only one that really makes a difference is the um, the Whirlpool one that I have here in this diagram. Not this one, but the, the this diagram right uh, this diagram right here. This one here, this timer is different. I made the mistake of putting a regular timer in there and the customer called me back and said it's not cool. And, and I'm like, I just put a timer in here. Ah, uh, that's why. I actually took the timer apart. There's clips here. And I move where the timer motor connects internally, and I uh, I made it internal like as if it had the wire on the outside, so I didn't have to come back with another timer. I'll have to show you guys that one day. I'll, I'll do a video on it. So in answer to the question, uh, the to check the the timer, uh, we check brown and white here using the white on the uh, light bulb. Okay, which terminals on a Maytag refrigerator would you use to check the defrost heater? Um, if I wanted to check the heater, I'm going to use pins 2 and 3. And if I was going to check the heater, I could do two tests from here. One, I can ohms test it, and that would check both my heater and my defrost thermostat. Or I could check voltage here and see if I got 120 here. If I have 120 here, I know that my timer sending power out, one of these two components are bad. So the answer is terminals two and three are the ones you would test on this diagram to check the defrost thermostat and the defrost heater. Now on, on this one, if you test the defrost heater from the defrost timer, and get a reading of 240,000 ohms. So you're checking here and here, and you get this reading. Someone tell me what that means. I'll give you a hint. Look at this box right here. If you guys want, I can zoom in on it if you want to. It's uh, closed. Um, no, 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 no. What do you mean it's closed? The bimetal, the bimetal is closed. Um, well, what should it? What should a bimetal read when it's closed? Continuity. Um, no, but I mean. If you checked a defrost thermostat, a regular thermostat, and it was closed, what kind type of reading? Don't say continuity because a, a motor of 30 ohms has continuity. A switch closed has continuity, but what is an actual ohm reading you would get on a defrost thermostat? It's the same as a light switch, which would be what when it's closed? Zero. zero ohms so this thermostat's an oddball Maytag and Admiral and Magic Chef they're all part of the same company now Whirlpool bought them but they had a resistor inside the thermostat now all that was was for testing purposes if you got 240,000 ohms on this test terminals 2 and 3 you're reading through the heater which is about 30 ohms but you're going through the resistor in the thermostat the actual switch is open so if i'm getting a 240,000 ohm reading i'm reading through the heater and through the resistor of this defrost thermostat and back my bimetal is open so if i'm getting a 240,000 ohms reading the bimetal is open and needs to be replaced if the bimetal was closed, I would have 30 ohms. I'd get the resistance value of the heater, and when this switch is closed, the top part touches, 
you're not going to read the resistance value of this this bimetal. You're going to read through the thermostat. So all you're going to get is the resistance of your heater, which is about 30 to 40 ohms. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. In the Whirlpool refrigerator diagram, the defrost timer is continuous run, cumulative run, adaptive defrost, or computerized? What do you guys think? Take a guess. I'm continuous run. Uh, well, close. It's cumulative run. Now this is where we go back to that eight hour or six hour timer. Continuous run, that timer runs all the time. I'm going to come back to this diagram in a second. I want to go to another diagram real quick. This diagram right here on the bottom left. Look, power comes in here and goes to the defrost timer motor right here. There's no switches in this line. Power is going right to the timer motor. Now coming out the other side of the timer motor is neutral. Is there any switches or controls that can turn that motor off? No. The no. only way, even if the customer goes inside and turns the thermostat off, says, I don't want my refrigerator running, this timer is still going to advance. As long as the refrigerator is plugged in, the timer is going to go into cooling and defrost even if the customer turned the thermostat off on the refrigerator so that the compressor don't run. In that case, the bimetal won't be cold and, the, and when it goes into defrost, the heater won't work either because the box is warm. It has to be cold for that bimetal to give you a reading. But this is what we call continuous run. Now if we look at the Maytag on the diagram on the right, Power comes in the red and goes out the white. It comes in, goes through the temperature control to the timer motor and back out. So now we have a switch in series with the timer motor. And that's your temperature control. So it's going to open and close to control the temperature in the refrigerator, which is really like turning these fans and compressor on and off. But it is also going to stop the timer from running. Now, it's the same timer, the six hour timer or the eight hour timer that I showed you in the previous pictures, but the way they get power to their timer motor is different. On the first picture on the left, the timer motor runs all the time. So you could say every eight hours, 12 o'clock, it's going to go defrost. Eight o'clock that night, it's going to go defrost. Four o'clock the next morning, it's going to go defrost and 12 o'clock again it's going to defrost on this one. On this one, whenever the thermostat opens saying the refrigerator is cold, the timer is not moving. And so when the refrigerator, you open and close the door and the thermostat says, hey, you got to turn the compressor back on, it's getting warm in here. Now the timer's advancing when the compressor and fans are on. So we call this a cumulative run. Cumulative run means it has to accumulate six hours of compressor run time. Once the compressor is run six hours based on the thermostat, this timer will go into defrost or eight hours, depending on whatever that timer is. What's the advantage of cumulative versus continuous run? Anybody have any ideas? Save, save the motor. Well, not so much save the motor. The government told manufacturers, hey, you have to make this thing more energy efficient. you got to stop using so much electricity on all these appliances. Stop using all that water in the washing machine and your dishwashers. You know, government's going to be so strict you're going to clean your dishes with a, with a teardrop. And that's all the water you're going to be able to use. But anyways, this timer 
like I said, depending on the usage, how many times a customer goes in, in and out of the box and how hot their environment is, is how often this compressor is going to run. If you live by yourself and you're the only one there and you're working all day and you come home, you go in out of your refrigerator maybe two, maybe three times a day unless you're you know, having a couple beers, maybe five. But you go in, you get what you need and you leave, your refrigerator doesn't run that much. It doesn't need to defrost three times a day. One of the very first questions I asked was how long can we go before a customer starts losing food? Five days. So why defrost three times a day when you only go in the box two or three times a day? But a cumulative run unit, if you had a big family and the doors are opening and closed, well, the thermostat's going to stay closed longer, compressor's going to run more, we are going to defrost more based on the usage of the customer. So the reason why they did that is all they did was change the way the timer motor got its power so that it would not defrost so often when it didn't need to defrost. So the diagram on the left is continuous run and the diagram on the right is cumulative run. It has to accumulate eight hours of run time. Now why do I ask that is because sometimes customer complains, hey I woke up in the morning and everything was melted. But when I opened up the door, it was all frozen again. And I've had that happen a couple of times where a customer said, yeah, in the middle of the night, everything defrosted. You're like, wow, you know, but I'm here now and everything's working. You can't change a compressor because it shut off and came back on. You don't know what it is. So we have something called a temperature recorder. A, let me just get a picture of it for a second here. Okay, so we have these things called temperature recorders. Um, this is a Supco one. They have these here. Um, these are old school. They have these little things now that plug in USB and you plug it into your computer. And watch, I can't find one that, that, I, that I'm looking for. This one here is pretty neat. I wonder, I could put that in and, and just look at it from, from a Bluetooth device. But these units like uh, they, like this one here for example you plug it into a computer and it has a software on there that, that plots a chart and every five minutes it checks the temperature and you could see it every time the compressor came on and every time the compressor went off every time it defrosted maybe I'll do a class on, on how to read that chart and how, how to use it but this tells you how long it ran um, so like if a customer told you it shut off in the middle of the night you can put one of these inside the refrigerator and see if it is shutting it off. How long was it off? What was the temperature it was doing? Was the compressor on and it just shut off? Was it off for an hour? Was it off for a day? Um, that temperature recorder is used to tell you that. Now it's not going to tell you everything that's wrong with it, but it just gives you an idea of what happened when it when it stopped cooling. So. Um, that's continuous and cumulative run timers. So that's cumulative run. And the reason why this one's cumulative run is power has to come in here and it goes through the thermostat to feed the timer motor, but it also has to go through the defrost bimetal and the defrost heater to get power. So this timer motor may be a 6, 8, or 12 hour, but again, it's depending on the thermostat the operating thermostat inside the box cycling it on and off to accumulate eight hours of compressor runtime. All right, in the Maytag diagram, the ice maker on top, I just said like this. What type of timer is this one? Continuous or cumulative? Cumulative. This one's cumulative because the timer motor is in series with the operating temperature control and so again it has to accumulate six to eight hours of run time. Alright if you test the defrost heater from the timer and get a 240,000 ohms I gave you the answer earlier the answer is the bimetal is open um, that if you're getting 240,000 ohms and you're checking 
this circuit here, that means that thermostat is open. If you test the defrost heater uh, or, or the defrost timer and get a re that's the same question, isn't it? I apologize, it's the same question. Well, I seem to cover all the diagram. Does anybody have any questions about uh, any of these diagrams, defrost timers? I did not get into adaptive defrost controls, which are more computerized. There are some videos on our channel, I think, where I've covered over defrost systems pretty good and might have even talked about adaptive defrost. I'll check, and if I don't see it, I'll make a new one in my class. I'll be out of school until January 8th, and um, this trimester coming up, uh, one of my students who happens to be signed on right now is going to be competing in a contest against other students, and I'll be covering a lot of troubleshooting and doing a lot of lectures, so I'll be posting a lot of videos uh, coming up in January. Uh, between January and February of troubleshooting and circuits. Does anybody have any questions about these diagrams or anything before I uh, finish it up? No? I have one. Yes, sir. So on this diagram here, you said if you test it between uh, 2 and 3. Yes, sir. Here. And you've got 120 volts, then one of those components was bad, correct? Which, which component? It's either going to be the defrost heater or... The defrost bimetal. Bimetal, yes. Yes. Now, not all of them have that little resistor in there. So if you had voltage right there, now you want to go to ohms and see if it's the bimetal or the heater. But let's just say you got no reading most likely it's the heater but I've seen some of those bimetals on these made tags I, and GE too sometimes I've actually seen the bimetal almost like capacitors like they they, ex, they explode outward like like mm. inside something popped so if you think it's the heater or the bimetal uh, neither one of them are that expensive you know what replace them both what's wrong with replace them both you pay wholesale on them, customer pays retail on them, you put two brand new parts in the refrigerator, and it's going to work. So, I, 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 you know, I wouldn't say, like, if you got a dishwasher not draining and you order a pump and this and that and this, don't do that. But on a bimetal and heater, some of them, like, like uh, Frigidaire, the bimetal is part of the heater. It has to be replaced with it. You, you know, if you want to change this bimetal, you have to cut it out of the harness. So, I would just replace both. Yes. Any other questions? All right, guys. I might I might put another one up next next week. Uh, maybe towards the end of the week, I'll post something in the community question uh, section with questions and diagrams like this. And then uh, maybe one day next week, in the evening, uh, I'll do another class because I'm not teaching nights this these two weeks. So I have a little opportunity to to give you guys some classes. I'll do some more electrical troubleshooting, some diagram stuff uh, coming up. I appreciate you, and you guys uh, have a happy new year, okay? Thank you. Great class. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Richard. No problem. You guys take care. Have a great day. Good class, Rick. Thank you.